All right. Welcome to Truth Be Told. I'm Tony Sweet. We're here with Captain Ron. We're so excited to have you guys with us today. Uh, we have a great show for you guys. We always try to bring something that we are intrigued about and we want to learn more about. Uh, we have a, a Ph.D. in the house, and we're not talking about Captain Ron. He's still working on his grade school level education. Uh, we have uh, Thomas or Tom Valone in with the from uh, with a brand new, not really a brand new book, but a book that I know when it when I saw it, it caught my eye. It really caught my eye. And, and the title is uh, Nikola Tesla's Electricity Unplugged: Wireless Transmission of Power as the Master of Lighting in, Intended. And so. Uh, we are going to talk with him in depth about this book and then some other areas that I think they're going yeah, to be. Yeah, free energy is free. one of the big oh. things we've got to cover with him, Disclosure Project. I mean, Tom's Tom's got a lot of good stuff. Oh, yeah. So, Well, let's go ahead and welcome to the show. Uh, Tom, how you doing? Good, good. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your day. Well, I, I want to just jump right into it. Uh, your, your book itself, uh, I just actually they made an announcement with Tesla that they're making a uh, electric truck. Did you see that? Yes, actually, it's uh, just been announced, I believe, and we are following that news, including the supercharger stations yes. that Tesla is also releasing, and it's amazing. Uh, a very fast uh, car that goes along with it. So, how how did you get interested in uh, Tesla? I know uh, you know your background. But uh, what, what was your first, uh, I guess, uh, thought about Tesla and why you started doing your research on him? Well, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, which is um, uh, 20 minutes away from Niagara Falls. So uh, visiting Niagara Falls is like going into the backyard of Tesla's um, workshop. And there's lots of memorabilia there. Uh, I used to be a member of the International Tesla Society. And I gave uh, many lectures on Tesla there, including history of Tesla in Western New York. So, and and that is reproduced in the book, uh, the latest book you just mentioned. So that became the impetus for me to be aware of, for example, the Centennial in 1895, where the um, uh, Niagara Falls power plant, Adams plant was uh, finished and completed for the first time. And then 1896 should have been the centennial celebrated in Buffalo and Niagara Falls with all kinds of common circumstance. But Buffalo and Niagara Falls are blue collar cities. So it was impossible to get them to get excited about anything. Right. And uh, <laughs> so I noted that in my Harnessing the Wheel Work of Nature book that um, uh, the centennial went by with just Niagara Mall Power Company having their own little seminar, and that <laughs> <Right>. was it. <laughs> and the same thing happened with the Warren Cliff Towers centennial in 2003. And so when you started writing this, uh, well, working on this book, what, what was your first, I guess, discovery that uh, really stood out to you? Um, that you did not know before. Was there anything in particular? Oh, actually, yes. Um, and I'm glad you asked that question because the uh, previous book called uh, Harnessing the Wheelwork of Nature was the uh, summary of not only wireless transmission of power from Tesla's point of view, but also his biographical information and some electrotherapy info. But is at the time and up till now, um, uh, all of us that are experts on the wireless transmission of power, according to Tesla, thought that the Earth ionosphere cavity, my hands, Earth at the bottom, right. ionosphere <laughs> at the top, uh, was the medium for transmission of the waves, the longitudinal waves that Tesla was intending. Now, that still holds true because the Wardenclyffe Tower is essentially pulsing at 8 hertz or 11 hertz, according to uh, some of the experts like Nick Simos. However, the big discovery, which is answering your question, the last chapter is devoted to um, the uh, Corum brothers, Jim Corum and uh, Ken, who have now pioneered the uh, Zenic wave. And I paused because no one knows what the Zenic wave is. I was going to no, ask. I was just gonna say, right. <laughs> I was like, what is this anyway? <laughs> <laughs> well, on page um, uh, 474, we actually see a picture of Tesla standing next to Mr. Zenic. 
Ah. Uh, of course, you probably you can't quite see well, two of them, but you can see their their tuxedos at least. So the important <laughs> thing is, this is a man who basically was a prominent person who essentially theorized that the um, electrical pulses could also travel through the earth. And that conductivity is so superior and the dissipation is so low that it turns out the Corn brothers found that that was the um, prominent uh, means and medium for the transmission of the uh, wireless uh, energy, uh, literally around the earth. Wow. Well, I... Well, this and this, what what I love about this is is you're you're bringing something that majority of the people would be like, what is go what is going on down to our level so we can understand it, and I I really appreciate that, and I I think Tesla, you know, he was so far advanced, in in even I think even today because we're just now starting to use. The tech, well, maybe you know the government may has been using this for a while, but I think the public is starting to see his works, no and, doubt, and it's just now taking off. Um, so, again, writing, right? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Did, were you getting ready to say something? No, oh, we're all waiting for you, Tom. Oh go no, ahead. no, no. I was just saying that I, I think that you know this book is going to help a lot of people understand uh, Tesla a little bit more. Uh, I want to I want to touch on something that you that you were talking about um, electrotherapy devices and we're going to kind of steer away from the book just a second but could you explain what that is because when I saw that I really didn't understand what electrotherapy devices were. Sean, actually the uh, takeoff um, um, uh, launch pad would be to mention uh, Tesla's article and that was uh, published in uh, 1896 the um, electrotherapeutic um, high-frequency oscillators for electrotherapeutic and other purposes. Mm -hmm. and, and that was 1898. My, I'm in the Electrical Engineer uh, Journal. That's online for free, by the way. Oh, it uh, is. You can just Google the electrotherapeutic and the word Tesla, and anyone can read the entire one. What's exciting is, and, and you'll see this in, in the book as well as in the article, but I've highlighted the diagrams that Tesla uses in his article to show four different ways of treating the human body with a Tesla coil. Let me see if I, I'm going to see <laughs> so if I, I, I'm I pause see if I to even you know, you know, <laughs> connect the two, which most people don't even think can be done, uh, except to show off maybe a spark from the hands or something that uh, some of us have seen uh, in various uh, demonstrations on stage. But, the therapy essentially um, was something that Tesla describes in detail in that article. And then uh, as I, I wrote the, the book called Bioelectromagnetic Healing, right. which is now being used at universities as a reader, um, it, it basically shows the scientific basis for the uh, benefits. It's more detail on that. Oh, is that what you have up there, Tony? Is that the picture? I'm going to show and see if make sure this is something that... Uh is that something? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's used to those kind of uh, demonstrations, and most of us think it's useless in terms of uh, health health benefits. So, so health benefits. How could you explain a little bit more about how they can be a health benefit to us? Absolutely. the The two main benefits that I always um, emphasize in terms of high voltage electrotherapy, which is what Tesla is specifically talking about, mm -hmm. is number one you're basically boosting the transmembrane potential a single membrane of a human cell. And, and what's fascinating to me, and I still am astonished at the numbers, um, is that the voltage across every cell membrane is 10 million volts per meter or 100,000 volts per centimeter. And when you try to visualize what is 10 million volts doing across one meter of distance, you can pick any medium you want, uh, air, water, uh, you know, various insulators. It's going to short right through it. Right. 10 million volts is huge. That's <laughs> However, huge. your human cells maintain that kind of voltage when they're healthy and they're storing energy because, and this is right from a biophysics textbook, the only two ways that energy is stored in the human body is chemical gradients right. or electrical right. gradients. Chemical or electrical? And, of course, in the West, we always emphasize the chemical, but we forget that electrical gradients are an energy storage medium. 
So that's number one that you get benefits from, especially if you're feeling like you have a health challenge and you feel low energy, you're going to basically see a, a, a result or a feedback um, boost right away from high voltage. And the other most important or as important is the fact that electrons are antioxidants. I, I want to show, and, uh, I, I, can I show a picture ahead. and see if you can, and, and see if uh, this kind of makes sense. Is that? Yeah, that's a Lakovsky high voltage uh, double antenna uh, treatment facility. That's very beautiful, actually. It looks safe. <laughs> I know it does look safe, but what, what is, what does something like, like this do? Is it is it more like you said more uh, cellular, you know, reconfiguration or I mean re rejuvenation? What would this benefit us? Well, that's the kind of I have a, a electrotherapy uh, a Lukowski device on top of a, a Tesla coil, a five hundred thousand volt Tesla coil, right here in the lab. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to using that. That's a nice big antenna designed to have digitally um, or quantified frequencies mm -hmm. based on the distance between those rings. Interesting. Um, That's pretty so interesting. it's emphasizing certain frequencies, which is what uh, George's Lukowski um, talks about in his Secret of Life book. And what is the benefit of that for, for a person? Well, as I say, uh, what we found, and this is the uh, most, uh, I would say, valuable take-home uh, information, is that number one, you're boosting your transmembrane potential by any of the frequencies. A Tesla coil is a broadband frequency bath. Mm -hmm. It's like going on to sunlight for optical frequencies. However, we're giving you um, radio waves in the um, kilohertz, megahertz, and gigahertz. Those are three frequency bands that are um, uh, frequencies that you normally don't get exposed to. And Lakovsky found even emphasizing other frequencies were uh, all equally as valuable. But my philosophy is, why not get them all? Um, you, you, if the Tesla coil gives you the entire frequency band uh, in those three bands, uh, you might as well let the body decide what it wants to store. And that's the interesting part of the science behind it, is that the DNA will tend to store certain frequencies and then release them in the biophoton communication system. And that's another whole science. We, we actually have a biophoton uh, book that we've reprinted from the German. Um, and it's uh, uh, fascinating how uh, biophotons are information um, rich and are the fastest way the body communicates with the, the best type of, there you go, <laughs> the best type of communication between people and also within the body itself. So um, uh, the science is just being discovered, and it's so complex that uh, here's an example. Dr. Bev Rubik, mm -hmm. colleague of mine, built a biophoton uh, chamber, completely optically sealed, puts a person inside, closes the door, and with an, um, uh, an optical uh, multi, um, uh, multiplier, uh, essentially sees that from the forehead and other chakras, right. the uh, biophoton emission increases when they're in a meditative state. Hmm. It and was an hour and a half. In other words, the light, light from your forehead actually is measurable now. <laughs> it's no longer just a halo that <laughs> is, people talk about spiritually. Is this technology you're talking about now, is that derived? Does it come down from the from the Tesla coil? Is that the, the original? Well, as I said, as I say in the book, and this is a complicated science, I, that's why I wrote the whole book, because it's hard to explain all of the details in a short time. Sure. However, just keep in mind, the, the, the source is the Tesla coil. Lots of frequencies are coming into the body. The body decides what it wants to store. All of a sudden, the DNA has lots of energy, and now I can then send out the biophotons in response to certain stimuli. Hmm. Doc, would it be okay for a minute if we, if we move from this to... to um... We're talking about the Tesla coil. Let's talk about the Tesla, the power thing. What about the free energy aspect of this? Can you well, address that a little that's bit? That's another whole scene, and I'm yeah. happy to go into detail as I'd well. I'd love you to. Um, the, uh, of course, the wireless transmission of uh, power uh, essentially has that mystical magnifying transmitter aspect. And that's a feature that still is described in the first book, The Harnessing the Wheelwork of Nature. Uh, we find Elizabeth Rauscher, for example, describing the fact that the magnetosphere and the ionosphere tend to share energy. 
and therefore she believes that the transmission will tend to be over unity. Even though it's being stimulated by the Wardenclyffe Tower input, the um, uh, absorption of energy, and that I have to emphasize too, the Wardenclyffe and the wireless transmission that uh, Tesla designed is not being dissipated everywhere like the Hertzian waves are. Instead, it's only dissipated when the receiver is on and resonantly uh, tuned to the transmitter. Hmm. So it's a very efficient means to transmit energy, but it also has this mystical property that it may be over unity because of all the other features of the Earth contributing to this resonant transmission. And Doc, haven't you done stuff on, on the free energy because obviously the fossil fuel thing is getting – Getting to become a problem with the global warming and the and the losing the ice camps and all that, right? I mean, this is another whole area. We, every one of these things is just a huge topic. I hate to even ask each one of these questions, but can you address sure. that a little no, bit? Because obviously to. that's a and and actually, uh, any visit to the Integrity Research Institute website uh, will basically give you some of the details. For example, we do a f future energy e news broadcast to thousands of people on our email list every month. And it's archived under news in our website. And we tend to look for those uh, unusual breakthroughs in energy that essentially um, border on what's called free energy. And some of them are free energy. For example, uh, one of the latest ones has been the uh, power of moisture. Hmm. Uh, MIT first discovered it. Now there's another university building them. I, I showed this wheel, this motor powered only by moisture. And it's because the polymer can actually bend, and then a piezoelectric layer transmits the electricity outward. So there's uh, lots of interesting osmotic power, for example. They, they claim that the um, uh, difference between the uh, fresh water and salt water, if a lake is near the ocean, um, can actually be um, um, uh, capitalized on just to generate power from the osmotic pressure. So. Uh, we, in this institute, have concentrated on the uh, spiral magnetic motor. That, that, I believe, is actually going to see a breakthrough in the next year or so. Um, and it's just a matter of magnetic confinement and magnetic uh, configurations that will allow the power of permanent magnets to be used for producing work. Um, not many people know that the uh, spiraling and spinning electron is powered by the quantum vacuum. And so I don't know anybody that knows that. I don't know a single person that knows that. <laughs> that's that's so far beyond. Yeah. Is any of this technology really, you think, close? Like, what about, they keep talking about cold fusion and gyroscopes and all these things that they think they keep getting close to. Do, do you believe we are really getting close to any of these? Or Well, I'm glad you mentioned gyroscopes because, yes, we've had a breakthrough with gyroscopes. And to clarify what we're talking about in that regard, the, um, um, it's called CMGs, the Control May uh, Moment Gyros. Uh, luckily, I uh, have now a close relationship with a retired engineer from Boeing Aerospace. And essentially what uh, his discovery was and worked on for 10 years were the um, uh, pairs of gyros that were used to keep satellites up in orbit. Hmm. How to, how to, to me, a, a breakthrough in propulsion. It's, a, it's performing a linear force from two gyroscopes that are uh, scissoring. That's what they call it. When they're uh, moving in opposite directions forcibly. Wow. Hmm. So this isn't free energy. This is a force production without burning fuel. Wow. So this would be the future. Yeah. Were you talk, uh, Doc, I think you did something once where you mentioned how um, you could speculate on how a UFO would, would be powered. I gave a whole lecture on that too. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I mean that's I mean that's way beyond anything we have as far as we know, right? Or maybe not. Right. Well, sure. And and actually, anecdotally, you see the common denominator of UFO sightings being that oh, this thing was circular. Uh, number one. Number two, it seemed to take off very quickly. And number three, it makes right angle turns. Exactly. The G force so would you be insane. So if you those three together, you end up with uh, the first thing is that circular. Why is it circular? Well, it must have either a rotating uh, system involved or something that's spherically symmetric and uh, for a, a purposeful uh, reason. 
And, and what's interesting, I find, especially when you look at the Roswell craft, I'm actually working with Linda Moulton Howe on this. Um, oh, we uh, have looked at the electrogravitic layers and the inertial shielding layers that seem to be present in the uh, artifacts that she's uh, received and tested and analyzed. Um, and we have a video from uh, the last year's uh, two hour presentation from her explaining this. But that's what's fascinating is that uh, in the craft, there was no propulsion system. It hmm. was in the, the shell. And so you get to the point of electrogravitics. I have two books on that topic, and I'm expecting a third one as soon as we get some results from testing her uh, artifacts. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. We, gotta, we have okay. a sponsor that uh, we got to pay some bills. So when we come back, we have about a minute. We come back, we have more to talk to, to, uh, to Dr. Tom Valone, and we are excited to have him on the show. Please pick up his book. We'd love to have you pick up the book. I mean, I'm sure Amazon and other places you can purchase the book. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the chat room. We'll ask, and uh, until next time, we'll be right back after this message. Have you ever thought you'd like to buy and sell houses but didn't know how or where to begin? Do you fear your job is in jeopardy, or is your business income reduction keeping you awake at night? We're in the best time in 25 years to make a fortune in real estate without using your money or credit. My name is Ron Legrand, and I've taught a half a million people to do just that and personally bought hundreds of houses myself. If you'll call 800-970-6155, 24 hours, and leave your information, I'll send you the first 500 callers my hot new CD, Foreclosure Fortunes, and my best-selling book to help you get started absolutely free. I'll show you how to build a six-figure income part-time with no previous experience and no license, even if you're a busy professional. Call 800-970-6155, 24 hours, and get my new book and CD free. That's 800-970-6155. Take your life back and make this your best year ever. Call 800-970-6155 now. We are back on Truth Be Told. I'm Captain Ron with Tony Sweet, and we're very happy to have uh, Dr. Tom Valone with us. Tom, if you wouldn't mind, before we go back into the Tesla book, I, I would like to ask, just because it is Truth Be Told and we are all fascinated with this, could you talk a little bit about being, I know you're part of the Disclosure Project in Washington. Can you, can you just talk about that? We have a photo here of you. We, we've interviewed pretty much everybody on that panel with you. We had Stephen Greer on. We had... Um, uh, who else do we have on? There's a couple people in that in the, that were at Disclosure that we've had on here. Right. Robert Wood, yeah, Robert Woods on the right, uh, Stephen Greer, myself, and then uh, Stan Friedman. Friedman. Yeah, no, not Stan Friedman. I don't think that's Friedman. well. He's supposed to be there for this. I thought was he not right, at that but one? That was on the left is a is a medical doctor. Uh, it starts with an L. I, oh, Roger right. Lear. That's Roger Lear. That Roger Lear. That's yeah. Right. right. And he's passed away shortly after that. Yeah, he has amazing discoveries too that have uh, been documented. Okay, Agreed. so what's your shame. question? <laughs> well, I want like to know. I'd like you to talk about that a little bit because I always thought that that disclosure sure. thing was going to be a big revelation and really change the world. And everybody I talked to never even heard of it, and it drives me crazy. Did, did, <laughs> did what did you? What are your <laughs> thoughts on right. it? <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely, and and it's. And it's difficult to um, to realize that you can, you know, announce all this information to people that obviously were part of the government and Congress, and yet uh, it essentially has very little impact in changing the world. And I don't know how that can be true, but when you essentially present people with information that's outside their realm of possibilities and beyond their limits of uh, credibility, no matter how much evidence you provide, um, there's still that uh, disbelief. And it's easier when it's a paradigm shift to as um, the, um, uh, there's three steps in a paradigm uh, problem. And that is the first is, oh, it's easier to dismiss it. And, and then even if you come up with a theory to explain it, it still is a matter of um, uh, accepting the theory and then integrating it into society, such as we did in around 1900 when quantum and relativity theory all of a sudden came on the scene. Right. It's, it's just remarkable that more people didn't respond to that, didn't accept it, and it, it's, it's very upsetting to me. Um, and, uh, go ahead. Do you have something? I was going to ask you too if you could uh, address the the global warming thing a little bit more because that's been back in the news again. It's obviously a hot political issue, but this is a 
huge problem, right? I mean, I don't think that's getting the attention really, the, the, the dire need that we really have. Isn't that true? Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that, actually. And if you wouldn't mind, uh, I'd like to uh, point people to going to the uh, homepage of Integrity Research Institute. And essentially what we have there is the um, link to the uh, uh, climate graph that my colleague, uh, Dr. Jim Hansen, produced. Um, there's three different uh, links. The first is the CO2, CO2 and the climate beast graph. And that essentially shows the 400,000 year uh, compilation of CO2 temperature and sea level. Hmm. And Dr. Hansen produced this. I feel like this requires another journal article just so the public can understand what this graph means because he produced like a 30 page journal article to support it. Yeah, thank you. That's exactly where they should look at the bottom of the homepage. And so the first one is CO2 and the climate beast graph. When you click on that, you'll see 400,000 years of cyclic behavior. Every 100,000 years, we went through an ice age. And the most important part of this graph, if you click, go a little bit below that. No, nope. Oh, sorry. Nope. CO2 and the climate beast, right there. There you go. Um, thanks for doing this, because now you're looking at the most amazing graph I've ever seen on the climate to this day, and this was released 10 years ago, and this still has predictive power beyond what the climatologists have ever told us. Now, the first thing you notice, everyone can see it because it's in color, the three lines track each other. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Who that is amazing. That Over four, this is 400,000 years? And temperature are somehow correlated. Wow. <laughs> this is Jim Hansen's discovery and is visibly proving. You don't have to know theory. You don't have to know anything. You just look, and all of a sudden you see, gee, one's leading, the other two follow. Pick the number, you know, whichever one you want to show that's leading in time-wise, and, and the other follow. Okay, now that's an important um, uh, observation. Number two, what's that 377? way at the far end at the present time guess what that's the parts per million 10 years ago it's now 407 today wow 407 parts per million of co2 now what do you notice when you look across this entire 400,000 years it's never gone above 290 right Hello? Wow. do you think that might have a little disturbing effect on the earth <laughs> <laughs> the Gaia principle mother earth you know getting a little out of sync yeah for sure the other two are going to follow and what's amazing about the graph, see the key on the right side? Right. The key basically allows you to produce, as I have, the relationship between sea level, CO2, and temperature. Because the numbers are right there. And this is on the same graph. In other words, it's all been uh, realigned so the maximum minima are the same. And the important discovery, as I go back to the next graph, which are... Um, right on the same homepage area, is that we then look at the IRI climate chart, and you end up with a key is 10 parts per million equals a half degree C, thank you, that's what I'm talking about, equals 10 meters of sea level rise. That's what that graph just told us. I'm not making anything up here, so, <laughs> people. This right. is the only exactly what's in the graph. So I, I basically took part of the graph in the beginning, part at the end, and then calibrated where it shows temperature graph, five, five degrees C, nine degrees F, that's exactly the temperature gap that we are indebted for. Mm. This is so shocking to me. I can't believe it's not front page news. And what you find is as the years have gone by, they said, oh, the two degree C limit might be reachable. Oh, well, the companies are saying four degrees is inevitable. Yeah, well, guess what? Five degrees is inevitable only if we stay at 405, 407 or below 500 parts per million. <laughs> well, Doc, what, what I want to ask you is, what, why why is this not the front thing on the news tonight? Why is this not the headline on CNN instead of a tweet from our president? Honestly, I don't know exactly. why this is not everywhere on the front thing and everybody kind of go, oh, my God, look it. Right? You can't deny this information once you see it. How can you deny 5 degrees C is, is exactly where the Earth is going to try to strive to meet the other uh, leader, which the CO2 now is the leader? So you, what I'm finding gratifying, and I have to be an optimist all the time, is that finally in the news we're seeing people talk about sequestering CO2. I saw a wonderful article about planting millions of trees. And when you get into the million tree number, 
which Hunter Lovins was the first one to tell me she planted a million trees. And I took that to mean she had an army of women or people working with her to do that in her lifetime. Now, if other people did that and you got up to several million trees, you then you can get into the billions of tons of CO2 sequestering that we need to bring that CO2 level down. But we also have to stop. We also have to stop the people creation. From keep well, keep cutting because we're. I mean, just destroying forest faster. <laughs> exactly. Than See, I always stop because then, of course, the the audience fills in the rest. You know, right. We know yeah. both are needed. Right. You know, but you only hear half the story in the news. You know. Oh, let's the you know, switch. <laughs> if you're a good country in Europe, maybe right. they're going to talk <laughs> about getting totally electric cars, and certain companies are guaranteeing that by 2025, maybe. Uh, but I mean, but, uh, ha, yeah. when when is the when is beyond repair? Yeah, are we crossed that line yet? No, no. But the four degrees C will be the the limit. Four degrees C. Look on Nat, Nat Geo, for example. Mm -hmm. Nat Geo does a five degree video that's absolutely shocking, and and shows what Earth is like at one degree, two degree, three. Basically, every country is going to experiencing drought. We're going to experience more uh, refugees, more you know uh, migrants, more wars. Uh, people are going to be starving all over the world when you have this kind of temperature problem. Hmm. Uh, besides diseases and so forth, to the hurricanes we just water level like, too, right? <laughs> that was only the beginning. Ugh. We haven't seen the superstorm, the the global coming superstorm, which is a book title. That day after tomorrow was featured, was fashioned after. Yeah. Uh, that sort of shows the scientific basis of what you do when you thermally force the Earth atmosphere cavity. Well, so, I, I, but you got me too excited. I can keep talking about. No, this no, no. Yeah. This is the important one. Honestly, <laughs> I really feel that way, and I feel like not enough people know about that. Well, that's right. what I'm saying because yeah, you. Yeah, have... California's leading the role. You Californians are definitely the the leaders of the pack in terms of environmental awareness. And of course, you're suffering for it too with all the fires and so forth. Uh, that's happening. It's yeah, awful. yeah it, it's it's it it does baffle my mind, and and I think you know we when you add the political environment where they constantly battling, and then they then there's so many restrictions and regulations, and then things that just constantly and they uh, deny this data. You know, now they're now they're denying it. It's ridiculous. Now they're denying it. Uh, so with Tesla, I mean, we'll just kind of tie in Tesla with Tesla's. In, you know, creations and visions, and um, this this could be another way of helping the environment and helping our future. Because if we can, if like you said, if we start planting trees and start using more electric cars and other other ways of getting away from fossil fuel, um, this might be able to help. I hope. I I'm just for me. I, I I'm an optimist, but I'm starting to get that little bit of pessimist in me. I'm like thinking, well, hopefully. Hopefully I'll be gone before all this all this really oh, kicks in. But but you know you can't you have to think about the generations after you. So absolutely, and and that's why I keep you know imagining other scenarios that will. For example, they have concrete now that absorbs CO two consistently. Oh really? Um, wow. You know, and they even have ways to get um, CO two to merge with a uh, uh, it's a certain type of cement uh, underground so it forms rock. Really. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of technology, and this is all in our e news and archives. But why? Every, every yeah, but why is that not on the front page pictures. of the news? That's I don't why understand. It's like, it. Seriously, it's like, why are we not using this stuff I know, everywhere? It's so right. insane. And, and it's not funding. You know, if, if government funding was available for some of these breakthroughs, yeah, we'd be using it tomorrow. Well, I mean, we could even do the nuclear uh, path if we found, the, as it turns out, transmutation methods that are available. That, my good old deceased colleague Paul Brown uh, pioneered mm. X-ray uh, transmutation. So, <laughs> lots of things that could be done. Yep. Right now, this is something we could do a whole show on this. But without, well, just to move on because I know we're short on time here. Uh, Doc, I got to ask you: Is that an electric chair sitting next to you? Do you do you torture uh, <laughs> people that work in your office? What is let's, that for? Let's try. Let's put you in there, Ron. And see what happens. <laughs> yes, actually, it is, <laughs> and I and I always like to use that that term electric chair, but my wife convinced me it should be called the energy chair, energy <laughs> and that's uh -huh. the real purpose of it. <laughs> but um, the the word electric chair got a bad rap back in Tesla's day when Edison decided to misuse it. What does that do for so, somebody? Is that uh, something they just sit in and and feel the electricity? What's it do? Right. It, 
Well, I, I could turn the room lights off and then demonstrate it by actually electrocuting a child. Go ahead. Again. Yeah, could, could you? you want me to see yeah, I would love it. Nice. That's funny. I love it. Go ahead, sacrifice a live animal on our <laughs> show right. live on the air. This right. is great. Yeah, barbecue. Look at this. This is insane. I'll, I love this. I'll try to turn. Yeah, there we go. At least one light on, so you can see what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> Actually, not too. I can I can see pretty good. Okay, so I think I'm not sure if I'm still in the camera. I, yes, sir. We see you. I can see you. It's just off to the you side. Sure. But, okay. And and I don't you, know if I can turn the laptop too much in that direction. Although I could move the chair. Over. There you go. So it's pretty heavy then, huh? Yes. Well, it's got a whole Tesla coil underneath it. Are you holding a fluorescent bulb in your hand? Yes, I am. Uh oh. And in fact, maybe this light is too yeah, bright. Yeah, I was going to say the light's too bright, so. There we go. All right. I want, I want one of these chairs. This now. is going to go right through his body. Yep. That's the whole idea. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> no <laughs> way. <laughs> no way. I love it. These are the light. Oh. You could market that as a lightsaber chair. What is that? I think I've got it. Yep, I've got a compact fluorescent bulb, too. Oh, my We, we light these up all the time as well. There's a compact fluorescent <laughs> And so electricity is going through your body to the bulb. Is that what's happening? Right. Yep. And okay. if people touch it, for example, if I bring this over to a grounded source, it'll get even brighter. Oh, my gosh. Look yep. at that, Tony. There you go. I can feel the electricity wow. going through me just touching the thing. And you can you feel it. it. You actually feel a jolt. Yeah, there's a little bit of tingle in my fingers as I'm as I'm shorting it out to the ground. Wow. Yep. Wouldn't that be <laughs> awesome to have that like as a bed? You wouldn't need a reading That's light. You just lay in bed amazing. and you can have amazing. A... <laughs> now is everything else in your house just dark at this point? Right, right. The wife's yelling yeah. from downstairs. I'm trying to watch TV. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the lab actually. This is an office. Building. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is incredible. That thank you for doing that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a hell yeah, of a well, work. Yeah, it looks you could totally see it from here. It's amazing. I love that. Um, so, are these on the market? I mean, can anybody buy this or no? Yes, actually, we are planning to put it on our website. Um, currently, what's on our website is the um, Lukowski uh, 2000, and that's uh, a similar model, but it's essentially the um, uh, the standalone uh, unit that's a little bit farther away from the person rather than right uh, close to it. But we also have a, what's called a Premier Junior, and the Premier Junior is a handheld Tesla coil. So that's, that's a similar benefit. I want one. Uh, <laughs> why haven't we seen these guys? I've seen a guy put on like a, an, a suit of, of uh, metal. Right. And, and isn't that the iron right. thing? And he does the Tesla coil thing. And electricity <laughs> literally goes to him like a bolt of lightning. And, but he's unharmed. Well, it's going through the suit. The, the right. out, outside conductive suit is, is really channeling all the electricity away from him so he doesn't get electrocuted. It's an incredible demonstration. Though. It looks like he's, you know, defying death. And no, that, that's definitely going to be a good one. I'm, I'm, now I want one. No. <laughs> Mom and Dad, I know what I want for Christmas. Uh, well, before we get out, we, we just have a few minutes left. And we first of all, we really appreciate you coming on. Uh, uh, do you ha Are you going to be speaking at any engagements coming up? I know a lot of people probably would love to hear more detailed uh, information mm -hmm. on your book and some of your research. Sure. Uh, actually, the uh, next conference on future energy, the 10th in a series, um, will be held at, um, at Albuquerque's, um, uh, it was Embassy Suites, and in fact, this year, I believe we're moving to another uh, hotel, but it's on our website and also on teslatech.info. Uh, so that's August uh, 8th through 12th. Is our, uh, August 8th through 12th. Uh, cool. Of future energy. And that's at uh, futureenergy.org is our uh, website as well. Well, I, th this is fascinating stuff, and I, I, I've always been interested in Tesla and, and really didn't hear much about Tesla until the last really 20 years of, you know, some mm -hmm. of the, the cars and work. And now, I mean, as you see, like the truck was announced today, and uh, I know they said it could go, what, 500 miles before it needs to be recharged, which is great. And, you know, it's not yeah. a, it's not a, it's, I think, is it an automatic, I think? You don't have to shift gears or anything. The brakes last forever. 
Really? Because why? I wonder what makes them. I don't know, but he's. De- I, I I watched that demonstration. It was absolutely amazing. And the little sports car that came out of the truck, okay. zero to sixty right. in one point nine seconds. Wow, it's insane. <laughs> it is amazing. It does wow. a quarter mile in eight point nine seconds, which is like the fastest production car ever made. It's really you know, it's a about remarkable. Time that thing. we get more charging stations throughout the country, which is what Tesla's pioneering as well. And then you'll see that transformation where people realize they have less maintenance and no fuel costs. And I think we'll see electric cars dominate real soon. That's really a good sign. Well, I know in California, like you said, we're, we're really trying to push to even get electric cars only. Right. Doc, don't we have to also move to making the energy from for electricity clean as well, like by using wind and solar and these other things as opposed to just burning coal or whatever? No, you can burn coal and then have an electric car. And think you're, I, I mean, it feels like you're, you're not right. really helping anything. It's just you're burning the no, coal. Right. That's what right. your current administration is pushing right. for. Glad you pointed that out. So people are totally aware that you know the the reviving of the coal industry is not going to help things at all. Right. You got to begin to from the beginning to the end. It's got to be clean all the way. Right. Well, I, I know I'm from Kansas, and my my little town of Granola, Kansas, is about 200 people. Uh, just north of there, it's just all plains, and they've they've erected like all these windmills now. Great! Oh yeah, yep. there's tons of them. In fact, the the county itself gets like a million dollars a year just to lease this lease this out. So terrific! Yeah. Wow. So, well, we want to thank you. Our, unfortunately, the time is up here, but uh, please come back. Uh, I know when you get some more books out uh and again tell us where people can go and find the books and and uh well the uh main website for all of the electrotherapy high voltage stuff is bioenergydevice.org and bioenergydevice.org is a series of different uh, electrotherapy units that we've now made available to the public and the energy chair will be on there shortly as well um but the uh futureenergy.org is our website for our conferences Mm -hmm. and then of course our homepage will then direct you to all the rest awesome including the news news archives all right thanks guys for yeah thanks a lot doc i really really enjoyed hearing yeah yeah like like i said i a lot of this stuff we don't get to listen to uh, because when you're reading it you're like i don't understand hopefully (laughs) people will now go look at this you have to seek out this kind of news to because they don't put this on tv they don't i don't because the mainstream media is not going to do this of course to get paid by it's frustrating yeah all right well guys thank you guys for tuning in uh go to our website truthbetoldwebtv.com you can check out our youtube channel subscribe below we'd love for you to do that leave a comment uh and we'd love to have you go to uh doc uh, dr thomas valone's website and websites excuse me and uh, find out all kinds of stuff that uh, you may not have understood or or known before and actually matters and actually matters for our future and your children's future so all right until next time this is truth be told i'm tony sweet captain ron we'll see you next time thank you